Good morning. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that, having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers, the first married and died childless, then the second and the third married her, and so in the same way all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. For to him, all of them are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. When I was teaching middle school in Church Hill near downtown Richmond, I had a student that would start the day in some really harsh way. If I asked everyone to sit down, she made a point of standing up. If I asked folks to be quiet or silent, she then asked her friend about what they were doing after school. One day, her belligerence was over the top, and as we went through this regular dance, she looked me dead in the eye and said, You want to slap me, don't you? Still remember it. In that moment, a lot went through my mind. The first was, A, you're a little hurting girl who has to act grown up to survive in a harsh world that you've been thrust in. B, that was not even on my list of options that I was considering. And C, no, I'm not gonna slap you. And in that split second, as she was tensing and staring me down, I actually stopped and laughed. Yes, I laughed, not at her. But as she was gunning for a fight, I was the grown-up. I had full control of my response. She had no power in this situation that I had not given her. And that laughter shook her. It was a wake-up call. That's the one thing she didn't expect. I looked her dead in the eye right back and I said, no, I would never hit or slap you. Nothing you could do would elicit that response from me. Besides, I love my wife and my kids too much to hurt a student and get fired. Now that last line impressed her. She actually nodded as she walked away and said, because you're a real man. She went back to her seat to do what I asked. It broke my heart that one so young was that worldly wise and that world weary, but it also showed she was watching, she was testing, and amazingly enough, I passed. She was a different kid with me after that singular encounter. One of the most difficult things we can do as we make our way in this world and try to be Christian is to establish healthy boundaries. In fact, that's often where we're first attacked in our day in and day out. It is what it is. If you remember the movie Jurassic Park, there was a dinosaur called Velociraptors, and they attempted to break out each and every chance they had. They knew that the fences were electrified, and yet they tested them anyway. Link by link by link. That's what they did because they were smart. And because they were smart, they knew that eventually there would be a weak link, an unelectrified section, and then they would break free. When people test our boundaries, that's what they're doing. They were looking for the weak link, the chink in the armor, as it were. And you may be asking yourself, Rock, what on earth does this have to do with Jesus? Well, if we look at a straight reading of the text, not much or nothing. But if you look at what they were attempting to do to Jesus and what he does to block and stop them, 
This is exactly what we're talking about. Healthy boundaries. The question in and of itself is moot. The Sadducees have no standing here. They don't believe in a resurrection at all. Once you're dead, you're dead, they would think to themselves. There is no life after this one. But they knew that Jesus did. So they tried to trick him on something that mattered to him, not to them. They were playing a game. But with that in mind, look at their question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a, man a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. And then yada, 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 seven brothers later, in the resurrection, there, the resurrection therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Now Jesus knew, and so do we, those posing the question did not care what his answer was. Whatever he said, they were going to spin it, skew it, in such a way that it meant something bad. They would use it to make Jesus look bad, or silly, or stupid. It's like the no-win question. When did you stop beating your wife? <laughs> Any way you answer that, you are in trouble. And how do we protect ourselves in a no-win situation? That's a hard one. And we often face them more often than we want to admit. Jesus knew that it was silly what they were asking and said as much. Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. Marriage is for here on this plane of existence, not there, not then. And then Jesus goes on to talk about how God speaks of those he is in relationship with in the present tense, not the past. Quoting here, and the fact that the dead are raised for Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living, for to him all of them are alive. Jesus got them in the gotcha question. They were moot. But there is something else Jesus is modeling for us here. As I started, healthy boundaries. They're so hard to set up and so necessary for us to make it in the world we live in. Unhealthy people trample on boundaries. It could be expressed in a lot of ways. Snide comments, passive aggression, belittling, Ignoring politeness because we're friends or some other flimsy excuse. It could be doing things that cross lines, not allowing people the common respect that they deserve. The attacks on our boundary come in a lot of ways. But as we uphold our baptismal covenant for us to respect the dignity of all people as we have vowed to do, that includes how we allow them to be them and to be responsible and mature themselves. Our interaction should call people to their best selves and enable us to be who we need to be. Healthy boundaries, making them, maintaining them, and honoring them are ways that we can show our love for each other and especially for ourselves. No one respects a dish rag. It takes a more powerful person, a person at home in their skin, a person secure in their identity and belovedness to turn the other cheek. It takes a person to take, a bigger person to take a hit and stand there and have the audacity to offer the other. Wimps can't do that. Wimps collapse when they're struck. Wimps wither. Turning the other cheek as Jesus commanded us to do takes a strong, mature adult knowing the cost and willing to pay the price. A person with healthy boundaries can live up to the call of Jesus for us to turn the other cheek or to give our tunic in addition to our shirt, or to go the second mile if the first is demanded. These are not the actions of those insecure in themselves. Healthy boundaries make for healthy relationships. This is allowed and it is appropriate. 
Beware those for whom your boundaries are an issue. They do what they can to make you guilty over keeping things simple and healthy. See right through that game and what they're trying to do. Manipulators attack your boundaries first. Just because you choose not to play their game does not mean you cannot. It means that you love yourself and hopefully them enough to have clear lines of what is acceptable and what is not. The holidays are coming up and there may be a relative with whom you have a recurring script over and over and over again. They play their part, you play yours. You can see it coming a mile away. If you remember the Looney Tunes cartoon about the wolf and the sheepdog, now many of you may have thought that it was Wile E. Coyote, super genius, but it's not. The character was actually the wolf named Ralph, Ralph Wolf, and now he looked identical to Wile E. Coyote, except he had a red nose. But Ralph, no, Ralph Wolf and Sam Sheepdog would walk to work together, and then they would clock in, and as soon as they did, they became mortal enemies. One going for the sheep, one protecting them. And they were fine and good until they stepped into their roles. How often do we have play the same ridiculous type of game? We have to just stop it. Break the cycle. When Uncle Mort or whichever relative again goes down that well-trodden trail, maybe even ask, Uncle Mort, I love you. I want it to be easy to love you. You're trying to bait me here. I see it. I acknowledge it. I refuse to do it. Now look, what other ways can we interact so we don't have to go down that path again? It might be politics, it might be whatever, sports teams. We can get baited in so many ways. Now you might get lucky and Uncle Mort may hear you the first time, but it will probably not be the case. You may have to politely walk away. Jesus may be the door, but that doesn't mean that we have to be the doormat. In Matthew 10, Jesus said, I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves, so be innocent as serpent, excuse me, be as wise as serpents, and innocent as doves. We're in the midst of things that are out to break our healthy boundaries and limitations that we set. We do not let them. We set clear, healthy limits and protect theirs as well. No means no, no matter what age is saying it. No means no, no matter what age is hearing it. As we protect those we love and ourselves, we are doing what Jesus would have us do. Do not forget that. In the living of these days, having clear and firm limits is all the more necessary. Here's to healthy boundaries. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you for being with us. I hope that you have a great week. Don't forget to vote. I think it's an important responsibility in our society, and I hope you'll do that as well if you haven't already. Have a wonderful day. God bless. Bye-bye.